Hi, Amadeo Beretta here and in this video we're going to continue our Panther project by adding dynamic elements like falling leaves, rustling leaves and some birds flying by. To do so, we're going to employ elements from the Rural Australia Asset Pack, which you can download freely from the Epic Marketplace. The Panther animation comes from my Quadruped Walk Creature Animation course. You can find the link in the description below. Also remember that now the channel supports Super Thanks, so if you want to donate to support the channel, you can now do so through YouTube itself. So let's open up the Epic Games Launcher. All we need to do to add the Rural Australia pack to our project is to click on Add to Project, click on Show All Project, paste in the name of our project. In here we can pick a version 427, don't worry too much about this. And we just click on Add to Project and the assets will be added to our Panther project. And inside the project itself, not surprisingly, you will find the Rural Australia which will contain of course all the stuff from the Rural Australia pack. We don't really need all of it, but this was the fastest way I know to migrate it. If this does not work for you, you will have to download Unreal 427. If we go into static meshes, into vegetation, we should find 3 one We just grab SM3.1, the static mesh, we drag it into our project, that should give us a tree with rustling leaves. You can tell I'm working on a laptop because of the frame rate, I guess. Now let's check that also the effects are working. So I'm going into effects and I'm going to falling leaves. And in here we have the Niagara falling leaves system, which we're going to drop into the scene to see if anything crashes. And you see that now the emitter is making leaves fall. And some of them actually get stuck on the floor, which is nice. Hopefully we won't be seeing them too close to the camera, but it's possibly a cool feature to have. Finally, we're going to check if the birds are also working. I'm going to grab the static mesh of a bird in here. That flies, but it flies on its own. That's not really what we need. So I'm going to delete it. And into the main folder of the birds, you will find there are two Niagara nodes called FX Birds 1 and Birds 2. I think we're going to use those so I'm going to drag one of them into the scene and you see that gives us birds. They look a bit wooden, but hopefully we won't be seeing them up close again. I will also grab the second birds container and the second container you see has a bunch of birds flocking in the distance. So maybe we're going to use it, let's see. I will remove all the birds, store my fireflies into a folder that I'm going to call fireflies effects. My Unreal crashed in the meantime, so that's why all the lights came back on. But I switched most of the stuff off again so that we could work peacefully. So I'm going to grab my tree there. And really, in order to position it, we need to have a look at the camera. Everything we do is based on camera, really, in this kind of shots. So it seems to me that maybe in the background there, we could have the dynamic canopy rather than these big plants that I placed in the background using foliage. So I'm going to grab this big foliage in the background and just remove it in favor of of something a bit more dynamic, our tree. These trees actually comes with foliage as well, so they could be painted with foliage, but I do not plan of placing many of them, so I might as well position them manually. It's kind of nice to see the canopy moving there in the background because it makes the jungle feel a little bit more alive. Also, it would be cool if there were a little bit of complexity between the panther and that mega tree trunk there. I'm not really sure if with the fog we're going to see that. You see, we're not even going to see much of it with the fog, but let's try it. I mean, if it doesn't cost anything, we should be trying it. I'm going to grab another tree and maybe put it a lot closer to the panther. There you go. So that now you see the jungle feels a lot more alive. Now, this isn't really the kind of tree that would grow in the jungle, but we're going to see it for such a short time that I don't think anybody will be the wiser after they've seen the shot. Also, maybe we can grab the tree and just rotate it down a little bit to have a little bit more leaves in there. And I'm thinking of what would happen if we just duplicated the tree over and see if we can have some leaves closer to the panther at the beginning of the shot. Let's see if we have an intersection. There is an intersection at the beginning. This might be a little bit too excessive, so I'm just going to move it to the back there. In fact, I don't think it fits there at the back. So I'm going to place it further far away in front of the rock maybe yeah i think that looks a lot better it's just going to give us a little bit of dynamism in the background so let's hit play there you go so far so good this is of course not the final lighting and in here in the background we could maybe add another tree so i'm going to just drag and duplicate the dynamic tree and place it there in the background 
Again, just to give us the idea that the jungle is a live thing. I really like the big trunk in the background there, but I really think I need a little bit of complexity as well. So there you go. I think hopefully this should look a little bit better. Yeah, I think it gives us the idea that there are trees around and a little bit more of parallax there, which always helps. I could add a little bit of dynamic tree as well here in the background. Again, instead of adding this massive foliage that I use just as a way to fill up the frame. In fact, I can delete a bunch of them and just add the tree in there. In fact, if you think of it, if I add the tree, I also add dynamic shadows on the trunks. That's kind of cool. I wonder how it will look like if I make the tree any bigger. That should give me a little bit less darkness, but a lot more branches. There you go. And now the forest looks a lot more alive. I wish I had similar dynamic plants for the foreground now because it looks really cool in the distance. And this is another spot where maybe a little bit more vegetation would do. One has to think, however, that under such a big tree, one won't see much tall vegetation at all, if you think of it. And now that I have my dynamic trees, I can maybe think of the leaves falling on the path. So I'm going to go into the effects from under rural Australia. And in here we have a Niagara system for the falling leaves, which I'm going to position. There you go. I'm going to see if these leaves are a bit too big for the tiger, but to be honest, they seem to be the right size. This Niagara system as well can be scaled and you see that now the leaves are falling on the path. I don't really want the leaves to fall on the panther. I really hope they are going to ignore it. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the shot, move the system close to the beginning of the shot as well, duplicate it two, three times, just to see if these leaves are going to give me any added value, so to speak. Uh, every now and then I do see one or two leaves falling down. There you go in the background there. That's kind of cool. So they are barely noticeable to the point in which I might even duplicate them and move them to the back to the panther so that the leaves would fall at the back of the panther in the distance. Let's see. I'm not sure <laughs> we can really appreciate that without selecting the emitter. So maybe let's move it closer. So this should give us leaves that fall a little bit closer to the camera. They are barely visible to be honest. So maybe I can go into the Niagara system of the fallen leaves and see how that works. I bet that they are rendering a mesh. And if I go under FX falling leaves, the Niagara node, I find initialized particle. And in there under the mesh size, you have 0 0.5 as a minimum and 1.5 as a maximum. If you put one as a minimum and 2.5 as a maximum, we should get a little bit bigger leaves. If I put 10 as a maximum, I should get massive leaves, but I don't really need that. I just need the leaves to look a little bit more conspicuous in the frame so that they're visible. You see now they are falling down and I mainly want them to be visible in the distance because that's when we will have more time to see them. So I will place a couple of these away from the camera and I will make them a little bit bigger in terms of area. There you go. So that now as the panther goes, we start seeing the leaves a little bit better because they're a little bit bigger. So now these are all the falling leaves. We're going to put them into a folder. This is falling leaves effects. The trees we placed are going to be trees effects. And we're missing one bit, which are the birds. So let's try with FX birds one first. That's interesting. Now these guys are flying very low right now. So I'm going to raise them and see if we're ever going to see any of them in the scene in the darkness. I'm just going to duplicate this emitter so that we have two sets of birds. And then I'm going to grab FX birds two, which I think it's the flocking birds in the distance somewhere. There you go. I want to position them so that they become a little bit more visible. <laughs> they look a bit like a video game, really. Maybe I can skew the emitter a little bit. So let's see if they are even visible. It would be nice to have them, but the project is going to work even if we don't have them. So let's see the shot. We have a little bit of fog. There are some leaves falling down. They're visible. That's cool. Of course, I want to see the effect of my dynamics on a render and I also need the fireflies, right? There you go. So I will launch a render and see how it looks like. The canopies of the trees are rustling in the gentle breeze. And look, there are some birds. You can see the fireflies and we can see also some falling leaves. Mission accomplished, I would say. However, now that I have all the elements of my scene, static and dynamic, I feel like the scene would benefit from another pass of lighting and of course a render. So we're going to take care of that in the next video. 
And that's it for this video, I hope you found it useful. If you are interested in learning professional character and creature animation, consider heading over to animationpandemic.com where you will be able to book one-to-one -one sessions and find my materials and courses. Also, you can find the courses on Skillshare.com. If you like this video, consider liking, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And I hope to see you soon.